Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm here with another video before I leave Australia for good and get the fuck out of this desert country. So today we are going to be talking about eventual consistency and why it is hard to deal with and some ways that we can make life a little bit easier for our clients when we have an application that uses eventual consistency. Now obviously the problem with eventual consistency is of course that it is eventual. I can go ahead and tell you guys that I'm eventually going to get a girlfriend, but in all likelihood and frankly in reality that's probably going to be between somewhere from 10 to 90 years from now. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. We can talk about it and see what we can do to make life a little bit better for the people using our application. All right, so I've got the iPad up, so let's go ahead and get into things. As you can see, I've got this handy dandy title, Making Eventual Consistency Less Shit. So if you recall from last episode, we often are going to be doing things that are eventually consistent. The reason for this being that strong consistency, while nice, is too big of a price to pay. If I make a write, I don't want to have to wait for that write to go to every single database in my system. I may have a database in the US, I may have a database in Europe, I may have one in Australia, and the penalty of having to wait for that write to go to every single one of those databases is just too big and frankly not worth it. So instead what we end up doing is dealing with eventual consistency where we write to one or two or even a couple of places, but we know that some of those database replicas are eventually going to get that write later. So with this in mind, let's think of some cool simple hacks that are going to make life a lot easier for our user or the client of our application so they're not reading heinously and blatantly stale data. So example number one is just kind of the base case of eventual consistency. Recall that basically we've got one client, he's going to go ahead and make a write to a database, he's going to receive an acknowledgement from that database that the write has gone through. And then he can go ahead and read from a replica, which effectively has no time limits on when it's going to receive the write. It could come in in a day, it could come in in a year, who knows? So he reads that write, he doesn't see his write from before, and now he's saying, what the hell, I thought I just did something, but it turns out it didn't go through. So let's look at a few examples of things that could happen when we're dealing with eventual consistency, and we're going to go ahead and talk about these and uh, basically look at these cases and make sure they don't happen. And there are a few easy ways of doing this. So number one is reading your own rights. Wouldn't it be terrible if I and my girlfriend, who doesn't exist, but it would be nice if she did, updated my relationship status on Facebook. You know, this is uh, FB right here for Facebook. And then of course happened to read from a replica right after, which still went ahead and told me that my status was single. Now my girlfriend thinks that I'm snaking her, looking around for other girls to hook up with in my spare time, which frankly I would, and she thinks that I'm cheating on her. So obviously if we had strong consistency this wouldn't be an issue, I would read from the replica and you know it would say that I was in a relationship. But one clever way of dealing with this where we can still have eventual consistency is we can say, well for starters if I'm going to make a write for let's say you know 10 seconds after I make this write, I'm only going to read from the database that I wrote to. So we're going to make sure that we get the proper results back. Now our girlfriend is happy and we can continue to cheat on the DL. No, I'm just kidding. But also what we could do is even put a timestamp on this write. Let's say I'm making this write at time 100. I can look at another replica, let's say this one over here, before I make a read and say, oh, have you seen writes from time 100? Oh, you have? Well, that means we can read from you. It's going to contain the fact that I am in a relationship. Now, if you've watched my last series, uh, you know, and you've been on this channel for a while, you know that timestamps aren't really too reliable when it comes to distributed systems. So there are a bunch of edge cases where this won't work properly, but in the majority of cases, it is good enough to be right, let's say 99% of the time, and you know, we'll save the timestamp discussion for a future video. Okay, let's now go on to something called monotonic rights, or in this case, the lack thereof. So let's say we've got one group chat over here on the left where I send three messages. Hey guys, let's hang out, I'm free today. And that has messages ID one, two, and three respectively. So then my friend is gonna come along over here and read from these three databases. So basically, let's imagine that uh, you know when you're reading, there's this button that says get last message. And you can just keep clicking that and if there's a new message, it'll give it to you. 
So effectively, what get last message does is let's say our guy over here is going to first read from a replica that has seen message three, and that's the last one it's seen. So first he's going to read, I'm free today, which is great. That's kind of what we want. We want to read from the most up-to-date replica. But then what's gonna happen is his next read where he clicks get last message again because he wants to see if there's anything new is going to return message number two. Let's hang out because that's the one with ID two. And then finally he's gonna do it one more time for a replica that's only seen message one as the last one and now he's gonna see hey guys. So effectively, even though it started out as if he had seen all three of those messages, What's happening is our reads are effectively going back in time and things are coming in backwards because we're reading from replicas that are progressively less updated. And that is obviously going to be a pretty big problem. So as you can see, I've written down the messages are coming in in reverse order. So what actually is our fix here? Well, in this case, one easy thing that we could do is actually have our user read off of the same exact replica every single time. So even though the data that you might be getting could be stale, it's certainly not going to be going back in time because you're reading off the same thing. It's definitely going to be going forward in time, or as we might call this, a monotonic read. So that's very important to do. How could we do this? Well, if you remember our modulo function, let's say our user ID is 20. We could do 20 mod three because there are three replicas and that's going to be equal to two. So let's say this one is replica two over here. We're always going to read from that replica in particular. So that is going to simplify things for us a lot. Obviously this has issues if one of these replicas were to go down. And of course, like all the things I'm saying in this video, because it's still pretty overly simplistic, there are a lot of edge cases here. However, at least thinking naively about this problem and trying to get monotonic reads and writes, it's very important that basically, you know, we're reading from the same replica. It can avoid this type of crappy behavior. Okay, then the last kind of edge case that we want to talk about is actually going over something known as consistent prefix reads. So for me to talk about this, I suppose the first thing we should do is talk about something called partitioning. So partitioning is a topic that I will be covering in depth on this channel in probably five or six videos, but for now I'm gonna make things very simple. Let's say we've got one database which is super big. Rather than storing all the data in that one table, let's split it into two mini tables that are on different computers. So that's going to be this guy and this guy. And let's assume now that we have two messages basically. One is me asking my friend if he wants to grab lunch and the other is the friend responding sure. So as you can see, those are basically going to two different partitions, right? The arrows are pointing to two different computers. And the issue with that is that each partition is going to have its own separate replica. So let's imagine that we have a replica for partition two, which is this guy here, and a replica for partition one. And because there's no guarantees on when messages are going to be transmitted over the network, it's possible that that message sure is going to get to P2 replica before wanna grab lunch is going over to P1 replica. And so if that happens, when person three, the last guy in our group chat, goes and reads uh, our chat, he's only going to see sure. And he's gonna say, oh, I wonder what that was about, I don't know. And he's never gonna know that he actually could have grabbed lunch with his other two friends. So how can we go ahead and fix a problem like this? Well. Basically what this is known as is a causal dependency. The only reason that sure was sent in the first place is because it implicitly relies on the sending of wanna grab lunch. Now obviously it's kind of tricky in terms of how we can actually keep track of these causal dependencies and for each application that would be specific. But let's say that um, you know there was some like reply feature in our application, you know, a button that literally says reply and then the person wrote sure in response to wanna grab lunch. What we could do is say, okay, every time someone uses the reply functionality to respond to a message, let's make sure that they're actually go, both going to the same partition. That way, the messages from that partition are going to be sent in order to their replica, and we won't have to deal with any lack of consistent prefix reads, right? This will allow us to make sure that all causally dependent writes are going to be on the same replica, which will solve our issue. So what's kind of the gist of this video, guys? Well, it's not too complicated, but the point is this. We are often going to be dealing with eventual consistency now that we've brought replication into the picture. And yes, it is pretty much impossible to completely get rid of any sort of stale reads. However, there are some sort of stale reads that are going to make your user experience very bad and very janky. Those examples are pretty much the three that I covered in this video. And so as you can see, there are some clever solutions to basically getting rid of the most blatant violations of consistency, right? It's always possible, for example, that if I'm gonna to go to my Facebook newsfeed 
and I'm gonna say, hey, let me get a news feed, I'm not going to see all the most up-to-date posts. However, that's not a big deal because I don't know what the most up-to-date posts are. On the other hand, if I'm going to make a write to the database and then five seconds later I don't see it, I'm gonna be pissed off. So these three ways are kind of loopholes and you know being clever to make sure that your client of your application is not getting too pissed off due to the eventual consistency of your application. So in the next videos, I'm gonna cover the specifics of certain replication topologies, how you actually want to basically send those writes from one node to another in your databases. And once we do that, we'll have a much better sense of the entire picture of replication and which type is right for you. Anyways, guys, have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.